the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Lindisfarne is a tidal island off the northeast coast of England. The island itself is only 1,000 acres, and it is so far north that if you stretch out your hand, you can practically touch Scotland. Lindisfarne, also known as Holy Island, has a recorded history dating back to the 6th century of the Common Era. In its earliest years, it was a center for Celtic Christianity, and its monastery was founded in 634 by an Irish monk known as St. Iden. In the summer of 2011, I traveled to Lindisfarne and walked through what remains of the monastery. The ruined rock walls maintain the original outline, but now grass springs up where there used to be a stone floor, and the sky forms the roof above your head. Lindisfarne is a tidal island, which means that twice a day, this slip of land is completely cut off from the mainland. The water slides in quickly, covering the causeway that, without a boat, is the only connection between this tiny, holy place and the northern coast of England. It becomes a bit of an event each day to stand, as gathered crowds of people do, and watch the tide come in. Before your eyes, the ocean eats up the sand. The waves sneak in almost stealthily until what was solid ground a moment before is suddenly gone. It is a place of in-between, a liminal space. Liminal meaning a thin space, as if a crack has opened between heaven and earth. And there is something about standing in a place that has been known as holy for some 1,500 years, watching solid ground become liquid in a matter of moments, something that made me feel as if I was standing not just on holy ground, but that I had stepped into that thin space, like falling into the slipstream that carries you into a space existing somewhere between the present moment and the timelessness of eternity. Lindisfarne came to mind as I was thinking about today's gospel. On this concluding Sunday of the church year, this passage from Luke brings us face to face with Jesus on the cross. When they came to that place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with criminals, one on his right and one on his left. It struck me as odd this morning, this final morning of the church year, that we don't greet Jesus resurrected or Jesus ascended into heaven, Jesus as Christ the King. But instead, we find Jesus on the cross, Jesus on the verge of death. And yet next week we turn the page and welcome Advent. The year begins anew, and our ears will listen for the call of the prophet, the voice crying in the wilderness, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and we, the people, will look east, scanning the horizon for any sign announcing the birth of the Messiah into this world. Next Sunday, we begin our journey toward the baby in a manger, but today finds us at the foot of the cross. We stare at the child now grown, hanging with criminals on his right and his left. We are with Jesus in that space between death and resurrection, the space between the end of the world and the beginning of all that is to come. We are in the liminal space, the thin place in between time. It occurred to me that this in-between space is the space inhabited by the Christian church. Our search for God means we live in the land of life and death and resurrection. Searching for God means searching for the sacred, and the sacred exists in those thin spaces. You and I, whether we recognize it or not, 
have an open invitation to step into the liminal, that place where the sacred interrupts the flow of time, when the Messiah is crucified, when the tomb is found empty, when the baby is born and the entire host of heaven sings, those places where the holy breaks through and interrupts the flow of time, when Kairos upends Kronos. The Greeks had two definitions of time, chronos and kairos. Chronos is that flow of time in which we naturally swim, the unbreaking passage of second to minute and day into year. It is the space of daily tasks, meals, errands, commutes, work. It is the everyday unspooling of time. Kairos measures time in a different way. In ancient Greek, kairos means the right, critical, or opportune moment. Christian theology appropriated this term and finessed the interpretation to mean the appointed or appropriate time in the purpose of God. Kronos is that which can be quantitatively measured while Kairos is subjective and qualitative. It is what writer Madeleine Lengel calls real time. When the flow of Kronos is disrupted and we step into the other space, those are the moments when God breaks through, catching us off guard, when we are kind of drop kicked out of Kronos and suddenly land in real time. I think sometimes when we find ourselves unexpectedly on the verge of tears or even bursting into laughter, that sometimes that is Kairos breaking through. It might seem a little strange, being as we are sitting here in church today, but I think we don't always see church as one of those liminal places even as the weekly service, to say nothing of the special moments within the church year, are filled with invitations to step into God's space. We can get so caught up with things like the length of service and whether or not we like the hymns or the sermon, and that we miss <laughs> the invitation to go deeper. We can miss the crucial interruption and within these past 12 months, Christ's church has been wonderfully interrupted. We have had so many baptisms, so many babies, water poured over their heads, sealed with the sign of the cross, marked as Christ's own forever. We've witnessed weddings and celebrated the sacred intertwining of two lives. We've seen so many of our youth confirmed and then actually choosing to stay a part of our community. We've wept and borne witness and held one another as we have buried those we love. And weekly, we step into the time of the Eucharist, that place we go to dip our toes into the tide of eternity sharing a foretaste of the kingdom to come as we join the procession to the altar with all those who have gone before, those with us today, and all those who are yet to be. If we allow ourselves to be fully present, those moments that interrupt the flow can become some of the most important markers in our lives. They are moments of real time when we are invited behind the curtain and into the inner workings of the cosmos. The poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning writes, Earth is crammed with heaven, and every common bush afire with God, and only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round it and pluck blackberries. <laughs> Earth is crammed with heaven. Those moments when we see, really see, that common bush of fire with God, those are the moments that define us. The moments that allow us a glimpse into the eternal even as we are stuck in traffic and trapped by our endless deadlines and to-do lists. Earth is crammed with heaven, and the lowly bushes are a fire with God. It is easy to miss the fire for the blackberries.
But if we pause, if we take a moment to not only look, but to act, to love, as if we are already in the kingdom of God, living as followers of Jesus, then suddenly we can begin to find, like hidden eggs on Easter morning, the bits of heaven shoved into the nooks and crannies of earth. Love is the key. Jesus asks us to love God and then to love one another. Love is the not-so-secret, not-so-hidden key that allows us to unlock some moments of hope and grace in our everyday lives. Love lets us stumble across those pieces of heaven tucked in all around. We are living in a time and world where we seem to define ourselves by who we are against, by who our enemies are. But Jesus doesn't let us off the hook. Jesus doesn't settle for allowing us to just be polite or just be nice. But rather, Jesus says we are to love our enemies. Jesus asks always that we do the hard thing, that we love the person we are sworn to hate or whose morality we despise. Jesus asks that we take a second and a third and a fourth look searching for the bit of burning bush, that inkling of God, that lives just as solidly and assuredly within them as it lives within us. We love, and in so doing, we show our hand and reveal ourselves as card-carrying members of the family of God. I have stumbled over some bits of heaven and experienced a lot of love during my time here at Christ Church. One such moment occurred early on on some regularly frantic Sunday in my first year as Director of Christian Education, and I finally had all the kids in the sanctuary safely returned from Sunday school, and nothing had happened to prevent me from actually staying for the rest of the service, which was in and of itself a minor miracle. I had been here maybe six months. I didn't know everyone, but I knew many of you. And so I slid into the back pew and waited for my time to go forward. I got to the rail and it was fairly crowded. And just as I was sinking to my knees, trying very hard to stay in my space, someone suddenly appeared at my side with her three children and kind of stage whispered, scooch over. So I scooched. We all kind of snugged up together, shoulders touching. And I'm sure I laughed. And it doesn't matter if she doesn't give the moment a second's thought. But for me, that's when I knew I was a part of this family. It was just a moment, but it was heaven on earth. The waters covered the sand. The bush was on fire. I scooched. And I found God present in the touch and warmth and laughter as we took our places side by side and shared together the bread and the wine in the kingdom of heaven. We are the church, and that means we reside in the liminal space. We have a foot in both worlds. What is now and what is to come operate concurrently in the kingdom of our creator, the kingdom in which we are citizens. We are a church of life and death and resurrection. We live and work in the in-between space of the eternal. You and I, we humans on this planet, we followers of Jesus, we are sacred children of the Creator. And we identify ourselves as such by the fact and the practice of our love. So let's go forth, you and I, taking that love practicing that love out in our troubled world. And while we're at it, let's keep an eye out for that lowly bush aflame with God. Amen.